to a report in the Washington Post this past week. Um, Trump's advisors, we're quoting them here, said there's, quote, a 70-30 chance that the former president will announce a run uh, to return to the White House by Labor Day weekend. So 70% chance Trump gets into the presidential race this summer. Um, of course, this comes after Roger Stone told the press he'd announce in July. So like a lot of things, that of Trump world, take it with a grain of salt. Um, meanwhile, the January 6th MAGA riot committee um, keeps holding hearings. And with that, the speculation also continues to grow that Trump will be indicted in the state of Georgia at a minimum. We talked about that with Zoltar this last week on Star Trek with Gamblers. So um, keeping it general here, uh, these are two huge questions, whether or not Trump gets into the presidential race or whether or not he's indicted. Um, let me just ask you, Pratik, would you rather bet on, I don't know, trying to time Trump's presidential campaign launch or would you rather bet, generally speaking, on um, when he might be indicted? Yeah, so, I mean, I think the, the first question to think about is whether or not these situations will happen at all. Uh, my view is that an indictment of Trump is very, very likely. I mean, I would say probably over 80% between Georgia and the federal uh, indictment. So that one to me is largely a timing question. Whereas on um, the question of Trump, running and he's certainly telegraphing that he is interested uh but whether or not he will ultimately pull the trigger and do it i think is a, a tougher question um the way that i would trade this one is i think that the the markets are overreacting on the possibility not necessarily of trump announcing but of announcing in the near future so what i would do is try to short the possibility of trump running uh, not with the intention of holding that particularly uh, long you know, but I think that just the fact that he, I mean, I, the, the reason why I don't think he can announce quickly basically has to do with campaign finance implications. So like right now, I mean, he's getting a lot of different perks by not being an official candidate. Like I think the Republican Party is kind of working with him to fundraise and they pay for a lot of his legal bills and so forth. Um, he doesn't have all that many disclosure requirements. Requirements, all that basically, uh, he has so what to you're, forego once he what you're starts saying to become is, an official candidate. So I would say, like, yeah. What, you, what you're saying is, once he's an official candidate, he can't fundraise so that he can refurbish his airplane, like we recently saw on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, um, among many other things. So um, what I would say is, like, right now, I'm predicted there is a market will. Will Trump file to run for president before 2023? Uh, what I would say is buy no right now in the low 40s. And I mean, I think the market is going to kind of inch up by the end of this month. And I would even say kind of hold it uh, at least for like mid August or something, kind of approaching Labor Day. Um, I, I don't think Trump's going to announce that early, but if it looks like he might be, you know, you can bail. But I think that you can just kind of buy the panic and then sell it once the market stabilized a little bit. So hold on. Can I can I slow you down for a second here? Yeah. So we just had Zoltar on this podcast saying Trump won't get indicted. Are you just are you just at odds with Zoltar? I thought you guys were friends. Well, if I recall that episode, I think what Zoltar is saying is uh he thinks Georgia indictment is very likely, and I agree with him there. Um, I think that's more or less an eventuality. It's only a timing question. Uh, and by the way, I agree with Zoltar too, that I don't think that's gonna happen by September 1st, okay. uh, which is the predicted deadline. Okay. I think that probably Zoltar and I have a bit of a different view on the possibility of the federal indictment. Um, I mean, in fairness to Zoltar, a lot has changed, but when you look at the new evidence that came out uh, in the last hearing of the January 6th committee. I mean, you now have, on top of everything else, indications that Trump is engaged in witness tampering and so forth. So my sense is that probably Garland is going to indict. Uh, but I, I don't think That is bold, it's dude. That is bold that a sitting president will indict his predecessor. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't even know if he wants to do it, but I just think it's so overwhelming at this point. I don't really think he has a choice. Um, well, and I think that that market probably spikes uh, after the Georgia indictment. So I think that what the way that I would trade this one is to go on poly market. And there's a uh, 
I mean, they, they have different options on like by when Trump would get indicted. Um, you can get uh, Trump to be indicted by the end of the year in the high 20s by December 31st. Um, that's a pretty attractive price to me. I don't think necessarily hold that one to the end, uh, but I think that the markets are severely discounting the possibility uh, of a Georgia indictment or even a federal indictment. And uh, I think there's a good chance of getting a, a good payday on that one. Okay, okay. So uh, th like walk me through, I I'm trying to like head fake the head fake here because I feel like the one thing Democrats can agree on is that like a world where Donald Trump is the president is not a world worth saving. So if, if they were to indict Donald Trump, like, wouldn't that create a situation where Donald Trump would be kind of a martyr and fundraise off of it? So like, maybe it's a, um, you know, don't uh, pet a sleeping dog situation. Or do you think that White Houses actually care about the rule of law? And um, it's important for them to follow the Constitution. I know it's been very, it's been very controversial. That the Supreme Court has actually been ordering the Biden White House to follow the Constitution. But maybe in this case, that's, uh, you know, it's a good idea for them to, to keep not following it and not indicting Trump or something, or I, I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. You're the one who knows about this. Well, so, I mean, the, the, the internal dialogue that you had there, I think is probably the kind of discussions that were happening in uh, Nancy Pelosi's office in the context of impeachment. Yeah. But I mean, this is sort of the, the problem for Trump. And I think what the markets are missing is that this is not, this is far less of a political question than it is a legal question at this point. Um, so. I mean, where I see basically vulnerability, I mean, in other words, so you have a bunch of lawyers with a legal obligation uh, making these decisions, which is a very separate question from the politics. I mean, I, I think basically you have um, three vulnerabilities for Trump. You have uh, Georgia, which I think is the most imminent. There, the, uh, the prosecutor has made it very clear and has every political incentive to go forward with this, and I think has a strong case. Um, then you have Merrick Garland and the DOJ. And I think that insofar as Garland was reluctant to indict, I, I don't think he's going to have much of a choice after the referral comes from the January 6th committee. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just been too much. And then the third, and, and no one's really paying attention to this, it, which is in New York, even if you assume that he's not getting uh, indicted criminally, uh, people aren't really paying attention to the fact that Trump is going to be under oath in the civil trial there. So I think that's a bit of a sideshow, but the point is that his legal problems there haven't really gone away either. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we're promising that we're going to get on to um, Chuck Schumer's COVID and that um, insane exchange between Josh Hawley and whoever that crazy law professor is. But I want to belabor this one last little bit here, which is um, we really glossed over the idea that Trump's going to run for president, which isn't exactly settled science here. And I don't know the campaign finance law here, and I think it's important because I, what, like, where, what is Trump's income stream if he can't continue to fundraise from his base? And to me, that's an important thing here, which is like, how can he suck as much money out of his followers before they move on to a new shiny object as possible? And does that require him to run for president to continue to take money from them? Do you know anything about that? Okay, so yeah, I, I mean, I think actually we should spend a little bit of time on this looking at like, what are the rationales for running early versus not? Yeah, uh, because that's kind of the core question here. I mean, from what I can gather from these press leaks and so forth, I think what the rationale is for an early announcement is basically to use this as kind of a strategy to stave off uh, a lot of Trump's legal problems. So you're seeing like reports coming from inside Trump world, they want him to announce before Lindsey Graham would testify in Georgia, for example, or, you know, that that would be kind of the, the picture there. The other would be to- de Like they want to make him into a martyr, like we were just talking about. Yeah, like raise the political stakes, I think, of right. uh, an indictment, but also perhaps equally important, which would be to send a warning shot to other Republicans about that there are going to be consequences to speaking out right. against Trump. So I think that's the, the pro side of it. Uh, I, I think there are two compelling reasons, though, for him not to announce. The first is that I think this is the last thing um, that national Republicans want going into a friendly year in the midterms. Yeah, um, but since I mean, when I, does he care about them? Uh, I think that he has always cared and will continue to care because so much of the party apparatus now actually matters to him. I mean, we're not we're not talking about a 
you know, early 2016 situation where he's just kind of the lone guy on the outside. He's, uh, in fact, highly dependent on maintaining a grip over the Republican Party. So I, I do actually think he has to think about well, but here's questions. But here's something everyone's bitching about. I've been in D.C. for a little bit is Trump raises like 100 plus mil a year off of the standard GOP platform. So like having Trump in the mix is a net suck on other Republican candidates because he just raises and disperses so much money of his own. So like, why wouldn't they want to push him out so that they can just, you know, get on the grift train and keep that money for themselves? I mean, there's no question that uh, I think the vast majority of people in D.C. right now don't want Trump to run. And I think that if Trump runs, I mean, this entire narrative about Republicans going soft on him, I mean, I think that story is going to change very quickly because almost overnight, he's going to go from being like someone who, you know, sort of uh, allows them to navigate or, or, you know, he's kind of essential to them keeping their job. But the minute he's standing in the way of them running for president, I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that a whole slate of people are going to run for president in 2024 and i don't think they're going to hold back this i mean this this just sounds like this sounds like the beginning of like a, a season of the wire or something where um you know like the the avon barksdale or like the heavy hitter drug dealer gets out of prison after being gone for a few years and there's just an absolute bloodbath in the streets for like you know who controls iowa and who controls new hampshire and who controls the chamber of commerce and uh like that it's just gonna be it's gonna be ugly if he gets in yeah, I mean, look, th think about like the people who are going to be running for president, right? Like very few of them have an imminent reelection to think about in their home state. So what does it cost them to go after Trump? I mean, I, I think this is the time they'll do it. Um, I, I do think I, I want to briefly mention the campaign finance side of it. So there are two sides of the coin here. Um, as I talked about just now, I mean, there are very bad consequences financially to get, getting in any earlier than you have to, which is why, you know, candidates go through the process of having an exploratory committee doing all of that. The other side of it, though, is that if Trump goes out and says that he's running, which is entirely possible given just his penchant for not being disciplined, um, he could be in terrain there where he may be forced by lawyers to announce earlier. But I think it's much more likely than not that he's ultimately going to follow the advice of his campaign lawyers and delay the announcement uh, as long as he can. OK, OK. All right. That is gold. Let's move on. We've um, we're, we're giving ourselves a long leash. Our audience is entitled to uh, uh, a quicker sprint. Um, let's talk about Chuck Schumer. We're really just talking about all the big dogs this week. So um, two truths and a lie about Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, Democrat.